السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise you to Allah alone We praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray no one can show him Guidance. May the best peace and, bless, peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Huda. Uh, phone numbers as a reminder, and it should appear on the screen as well. A code zero zero two zero two three eight triple five two four eight or two four nine, and the email address is ask at huda tv. We've got a few uh, pending questions from the last episode. Then, inshallah, we'll be happy to uh, entertain your phone calls as well. Brother Ibrahim from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was uh, asking about if a house lizard falls on a person, would that make him impure or najis? No, it would not because the house lizard, even though there was a command of uh, trying to get rid of it or to kill it, uh, but it is not impure in itself. Only if it dies and it becomes rotten, if it falls in water or food, it becomes impure and it may cause impurity to if it changes the color, the smell, or the taste of the water. Otherwise, the house lizard itself is not uh, nudges. And by the way, there is a rule, uh, a fiqh rule, which says that every nudges is haram, but it is not the other way around. Every impure, it is prohibited to consume it. But it is not every prohibited that has to be impure. There are things which are prohibited, but they are pure. I'm talking about the physical purity. If somebody came in direct contact with it, it would not make him void his tahara or wudu. It would not require him to take a bath or to perform a new ablution. Abu Amin from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we really thank you so much for the beautiful words that you said. May Allah bless you and your family. And he uh, have a concern that he's living in uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And he's going to perform Umrah. He says, When I'm at the Miqad, do I have to take a shower or do I just perform wudu? Among the traditions, the prophetic traditions or the sunan prior to making ihram is to take care of your personal hygiene by removing the unwanted hair, the pubic hair, the underarm hair completely by any means, shaving, waxing, uh, or uh, plucking. That's for both men and women. And taking a bath with the intention of performing ghusl. It is recommended to take ghusl as a mean of preparation for the ihram. So if you're nearby the miqad, that ghusl will be sufficient. And if you're far away and you make the intention and you are in any mean of transportation, uh, airborne or via the bus or whatever, and there is no possibility of taking uh, a ghusl once again to prepare for the ihram, in your earlier uh, ghusl would be sufficient. Also, it was reported that the Prophet ﷺ used to perform ghusl لِدُخُولِهِ Mecca upon entering Mecca. So if you have a place that you stay in, in Jeddah and prior to entering Mecca, you can take a ghusl. We do that whenever we land at Jeddah airport. There is plenty of facilities. Uh, of course, if you're landing at the Hujjaj airport, you can do that uh, as well. Okay, with the very first phone call of today's edition, Assalamu alaikum. Sadiq from Cyprus. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sadiq? How are you, Sheikh? Great. Fine, Sheikh. Sheikh, uh, I have a question, please. The first question, Sheikh. A few days ago, I saw the internet, YouTube. Uh, Sadiq, uh, you're breaking off. I cannot hear you clearly. Okay, I'm sorry, Sadiq. I can't take your call. If you uh, try again from a better line, I would really appreciate that. Uh, Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to the program. Yes, 
uh, this is with regards to medical insurance, uh, Sheikh Salah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the company that I work for actually provides this for us. And uh, is it uh, permissible for us to make use out of this uh, medical insurance? Okay. And the second question is, with mm. regards to marine insurance, uh, the company that we work for is actually a transportation company, and uh, this is uh, uh, one of the products is selling marine uh, insurance as well. Is w- this what permis- kind of insurance, I'm sorry? Uh, marine insurance. What is it? What is it all about? Uh, meaning, uh, in the sense like... Uh, it covers all kinds of transportation losses, etc. This is marine, this is road transportation, all kinds of transport. Okay. okay. Let me Thank ask you a couple of questions. The first one is, uh, is this kind of insurance, the medical insurance, is it mandatory? Do you have uh, to well, pay for it or is it optional? Uh, well, this is uh, something which the company provides to you and they don't charge you anything at all for this. So you don't pay for it? and uh, you do not even have the option of taking it or refusing it. It comes with the package, right? It comes with the package. Okay. Right. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Bashir from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Bashir? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I want you to help me. I want to further my Arabic knowledge and um, Islamic knowledge as well. So I would prefer you telling me where I can do that exactly. Secondly, I want to know if a girl that is not just has gotten married without being bara'a, what will be the stance of the marriage? Okay. Thirdly, I hope you won't decline answering this question. What Where was I the second from? question again, Yabashir? That it's a girl that is not a virgin okay. gets married without the prior prior bara'a. Without the prior bara'a? Yeah, naam. What do you mean? I I learned that she has to keep herself free from... Outside marriage relationship, you mean, right? Yes, yes. And willingly? To, yes, that she has to... Um, one menstrual period or so. It's called bara. Mm. How long that had happened? How long? Yes, how long did she have it? And uh, whether now she is uh, a good person, she repented or, you know, we have to verify that because you're talking about a sayyib, a woman who have had uh, sex outside marriage relationship and now you're interested or whoever is interested in marrying her. Uh, we initially mentioned before that that is not permissible unless if that person have uh, repented unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Okay, Inu. Are you there? I thought she has to keep herself free from, she has to see that menstrual period before getting married. Okay, then you're talking about another issue. Did she lose her virginity due to, yes, or yes, yes. due to adultery? Communication, okay, okay, okay. I'll answer you, inshallah, Bashir. Brother Govin from the United Kingdom, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, may Allah uh, bless you for your calling. Thank and you Shah. too. Um, I have a question, Sheikh. Go ahead. Um, uh, basically, I can I can read and write Arabic, but you know I really want to be a good practicing Muslim. But you know I'm hesitant because I can uh, read in Quran in Arabic. So, what's your advice? And if I read if if I read uh, Quran in English, would be the would, would I get the same reward as reading in, in Arabic? Okay. Thank you, my You're Salaam most welcome, Gavin. Thank you. Um, Sadiq from uh, United Arab Emirates, I'm sorry, Muhammad from United Arab Emirates, who inquired about medical insurance that comes with the package the, the company provides, who said, uh, if there is a, a cooperative insurance or social insurance, it is uh, permissible. And one who subscribes in such insurance is also rewarded because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى this is some sort of social welfare that benefits the entire uh, the members of uh, uh, such membership whether uh, a group of physicians or a group of engineers or those who are working in one company or living in a neighborhood or 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 so they all uh, pay monthly payments and if anyone gets sick they help him out out of this money or or that is permissible but the commercial insurance is prohibited and this is the opinion of the vast majority of the scholars and we discuss that repeatedly so if it is offered to you by the company you're not paying for in for anything nor is it optional then you can utilize it and benefit out of it whenever it's needed within the reasonable measures some people who might know they take advantage of that they claim that they're sick in order to collect medications or whatever or take a leave then they resell the medication this is haram and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ghasha falaysa minna whoever betrays does not belong to us whether he betrays muslims or non muslims i'm fully aware of some people who are living for innocence in the west where the system is very vulnerable especially with regards to insurance life insurance medical insurance uh, automobile insurance uh, house insurance because it's all materialistic and it's not really based on what ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa so what happens some people actually uh, they claim that they're sick um, they claim they have back pain or whatever in order to take leave in order to enjoy free medical and also perhaps collect some fund from the company or early retirement or or you have to understand that if you're not eligible for such thing then that earning whether it's in the form of medication or physical or early retirement or any sort of help that becomes prohibited man ghasha falaysa minna but within reasonable basis and you're not paying for it because it comes with a package go ahead and utilize it um, Bashir from Egypt had two questions. First, helping him out to study Arabic. And I'm really amazed because you say you're calling from Egypt. There are many, many places where you can actually uh, enjoy learning Arabic and become even professional in Arabic language and the Quran and Islamic studies. I'll just mention a couple of uh, names. This is not for propagation, but some people who are inquiring about it. Uh, Fajr and Qurtuba. These are two institutes. In addition to, you can easily find private tutors would come to your house, you go to their houses, and the best way to learn any language is to communicate with the native speakers of this language. So you can definitely uh, learn Arabic for staying for six months or so in an Arabic-speaking country, if you are interested and if you're serious about it. Similar to those who travel to any country and they learn the language in a very short period of time because their job required them to do so. Uh, as far as marrying to a girl whom have had a sexual relations outside marriage, what we call it zina or fornication or adultery, it is not permissible. الزاني لا ينكح إلا زانية أو مشركة والزانية لا ينكحها إلا زان أو مشرك. Allah prohibited marrying an adulteress or giving your daughter or girl who is under your guardianship to an adulterer. Except as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> confirmed, unless if they repented, and repentance is not by verifying the freedom of the womb from pregnancy, as you say, by having one menses or two or three. No, we're not talking about the idda here, we're talking about serious repentance. And it takes a while in order to verify that. For somebody who just committed adultery and... Uh, perhaps they have this habit and they say because they want to get married I repented that is not sufficient repentance have to be verified through the entire behavior of that person even if the person who's interested in marrying this girl is the adulterer himself it is not uh, that permissible Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam we have another phone call assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Kamran from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm very fine. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. Bless you for this uh, great uh, television channel and all the efforts. Thank you. Uh, Sheikh Mike, with regards to Riba, 
I know this is something uh, which is very common in, um, in you know, film societies. And there are many situations, social and in the office, in the work environment, where you are easily dragged into, you fall into this sin. And the fact that this sin is very serious in Islam, I wanted to know what are the practical ways uh, in which you can stop yourself or you can avoid those situations to, to fall into this sin. You're talking about backbiting, are you? Yes, backbiting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sadiq again from Cyprus. Assalamu alaikum, and I hope you have a better connection this time. Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, shukrulillah. Sheikh, yeah. I two days ago I saw internet, uh, YouTube that uh, one uh, video. Allah help Nepal. There uh, so one miner. I don't know English. The miner of Mars. Uh, is uh, somehow they close with the clothes and uh, by flying is situated on the top. They say the miracle. I don't. Would you explain what is this? Or uh, also, I saw another some picture that miracle of Allah, miracle of Allah. Some baby in the Russia. They have uh, uh, some verses of Quran in the body. I don't understand this. Please explain. And another question is, we know that for the man, uh, the pants have to up up the ankle. So where we live in Europe, there is too much cold, or where we work, some bus or some fire. What should we do here for cold or for what? Please explain. Uh, thank you and thanks all for the Buddha members. Okay. Jazakallah khairan sada. Uh, Sister Umm Am from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, first of all, may Allah reward you for answering our mm. questions and concerns. Mm. Um, I have two questions. My first question is about wiping over the head when performing wudu. Um, I understand that one is required to wipe the head from back to front and front to back. Um, is this method of wiping required also for women? And the reason I ask is because women, um, they usually have long hair, tight, back and ponytails and braids, and it seems difficult sometimes to wipe the head all the way back to the nape of the neck and back. Uh, so is it required for women also? And my second question is, um, there are four months in the Islamic calendar that are considered sacred, Muharram, Rajab, Zil Qadan, Zil Hajjah. Um, and I think most people, they are aware of the fasting uh, in, on the 9th and 10th and 11th of Muharram, as well as of the importance of the first 10 days of the Hijjah. But uh, what particular acts of worship can we engage in during the rest of these two months and in the other two months? And Jazakumullah khairan. Wa jazakum. Thank you, Sister Umm Am. Uh, Faiza from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, we do have a question from Sister Faiza. It's pending since yesterday about Trinity, and it was due to be answered right now. Faiza? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Great, alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Um, I have uh, one question today. Is it's it actually... about Trinity? No, it's not about Trinity. Okay. No, actually, two questions. I'm so sorry. Okay. One pertaining to the wiping over the socks. Actually, um, is it? I've heard somewhere that you can wipe over the shoes when praying, but um, suppose you remove the shoes and pray, then is your prayer invalid? Okay. And the second question is, um, pertaining to portraits in Islam, I've heard that portraits and picture making is haram, but um, some forms of simple pictures that don't look like an exact portrait are allowable. Mm -hmm. um, can you please um, clarify this for me? Okay. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Abu Amin from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia also had a couple of more questions. Uh, the first was pertaining medical insurance, and we did answer that. If it, if it is commercial, no. Any kind of commercial insurance is not permissible in Islam. The second, and of course we explained the cooperative insurance and we said it is halal. Is it permissible to find out the gender of the baby using an ultrasound? Yes, it is. And this is not intervening with Allah's business because it's already there. We just look at it via a, a medical instrument. So we're not trying to say that we know the unseen. That, وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ 
by the end of Surah Luqman is pertaining that Allah knows what's in the wombs, whether there is a, a, a zygote, there is pregnancy or not, whether it would live or not, a boy or a girl, happy or unrich, all of that and his or her provision throughout their entire lifetime. We have no access to knowing any of that. But via the ultrasound or the Doppler, we see what's already there. After the baby has been already formed and they, uh, they grew the limbs through which, and the genitals through which the, the doctor can recognize whether you have a boy or a girl. Some people like to leave it as a surprise, which is good. But is it permissible to find out through the ultrasound? Yes, it is permissible to check on the heartbeat, the health of the baby, uh, God forbid if there is any deformity, and whether it's a boy or a girl. No, no problem with that. And whether it's twins, which would be a big surprise. Faiza from Kuwait, who called yesterday, and uh, she had a couple of questions today as well. She asked about the Trinity, and how can I explain it, or how can we explain it? As a matter of fact, those who believe in Trinity, they owe the entire world an explanation, as well as on the Day of Judgment, they will have to explain. Who gave them the idea? If Isa alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded by the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَى هَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِحَقِّ إِنْ كُنْتُ قُلْتُهُ فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ This was going to take place on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish the justice in every perfect shape and form. So he knows what had happened, but he will still question the wrongdoers. Why did he do that? He will ask even Isa alayhi salam, who is free from the sin of being worshipped, instead of Allah or besides Allah, who believe that he is the son of God or God himself. This is all false according to Islamic belief and monotheism. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish the proof and the hujjah against those who believe that he have anything to do with divinity. And he will ask him, O oh, Jesus, the son of Mary, to confirm that he is the son of Mary. And he was born miraculously, fatherless. And Allah is able to do all things. Did you tell people, did you inform people to worship you and your mother, Trinity, instead of Allah? He will rush to disown himself and free himself from that great sin, a shirk, sitting partners to Allah in worship, is the greatest sin ever. Luqman said to his son, do not sit partners to Allah in worship. Why? Because sitting partners to Allah in worship is a great sin. It is indeed the greatest sin. He says, Subhanak, glory be to you. I have commanded them nothing but whatever you order me to do. مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ To do what? To worship Allah alone. To worship Allah alone. Then you can go to the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah and you know about this dialogue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us that there is nothing called Trinity. Nor there is any God who is worthy of worship but Allah. And about his traits in the most perfect and complete chapter of the Quran, in a very clear explanation, Surah Al-Ikhlas, the sincerity, in which the Prophet ﷺ considered it equivalent to one third of the Quran. Because of the Quran is divided into three portions. One portion is pertaining belief, aqidah, and tawheed. Then this chapter summarize the entire thing about Tawheed, Al-Ikhlas, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Then another third is talking about stories of the ancient nations, and the third third is talking about the commands of do's and do not do's, the Tashri'a, the Sharia, the Islamic ruling in the Sharia. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, say that Allah is one, Ahad. What kind of one? Because any one may have two and three. He said he's the only one who is worthy of worship. Ahad, not just wahid, ahad. 
He has no second, no third. Allahu samad He is the eternal. He is the sufficient. He is the self-sufficient. He is the provider. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor was he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufu wan ahad. And no one is ever equivalent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is really nothing that resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's the all hearer, the all seer. This is the concept of monotheism. We do not owe an explanation to those who believe in Trinity or those who do not believe in God to explain to them the concept of Trinity. As a matter of fact, I have known of many priests and many Christian missionaries who abandoned Christianity and entered Islam because they failed to explain to people, let alone to explain to themselves the concept of Trinity. It's confusing to them because it is not true. There is no such thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولِ وَأُمُّهُ صُدِّيقَةٌ كَانَ يَأْكُلَانِ الطَّعَامِ The Messiah, the son of Mary, was nothing but a messenger whom many messengers have come before him. And about his mother, she was a truthful, honest, trustworthy, purified and an honored woman. Him and his mother used to eat. You eat, you need to drink. You eat and you drink, you digest, then you need to execrate. Is it possible to imagine a God who has to answer the call of nature and go to the bathroom? Is it possible to imagine a God who may have diarrhea or constipation because of uh, some poisonous food or, or, or? In the, in the, in the gospel, that Jesus, the son of Mary, was walking and he went to a fig tree and he wanted to eat because he was starving. Just imagine that God is starving. If God is starving, he is hungry, how is it possible for such God to feed us? To feed gazillions of living creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself in the Quran, the most glorious word of Allah, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا There is no living creature on earth, but its provision is due with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ants, insects, reptiles, the fish in the seas, us as humans, jinn, every living creature. Who provides for them? إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ this is the concept of Tawheed. And this is the real monotheism. And I guess I've mentioned that before in one of the interfaith dialogue, which I make certain to explain the right perspective of Tawheed. I'm not there to tell everybody, we're friends, we're happy, let's play together, everybody's going to heaven. No, that's fake. I'm there to tell everybody this is our belief. Is there anywhere where we can meet? So a lady, after I finished, got up and she asked a question. So don't you believe that we are monotheistic people? I said, you should answer this question yourself. Monotheism is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدُ If you believe in that, you are monotheistic or else. I'm sorry, I took a, a long time answering this question. And it is not sufficient though. There is still a lot to talk about it. But there are many phone calls uh, who are on hold. Assalamu alaikum. Fatima from India. Hello, yeah, Assalamualaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam, Fatima. Yes, I have a doubt regarding the dressing for a woman to perform salah. We wear long robes like nighties, long skirts. Uh, these, uh, the cloth is long enough to reach below the ankles. Is it necessary to wear undergarments like shorts or pajamas inside this, or the long, length of the garment is enough? Okay, Fatima. Ummu Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, she asked in this question. Okay. So if the, uh, if the skirt or the abaa or the robe are long enough to cover the feet, okay, and it is not see-through, you cannot describe the details beneath that, then it is sufficient. 
You don't have to wear pants beneath it or anything. Not everybody can afford it nor could afford it in the past. What's required for a woman in the prayer is to cover the entire body except the face and the hands. These should not be covered during the state of ihram nor in the prayer. Other than that, the woman's body should be covered entirely during the prayer other than the face and the hands. Thank you Fatima from India. Um, Brother Salim from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Uh, I have three questions, Shaykh. Salim, what do you guys say? Do you say kiyala bai? What, Shaykh? Do you say kiyala bai? Means? Do you say, uh, you speak Urdu, right? Uh, I didn't understand your question. Do you speak Urdu? Where are you from originally? Yeah, yeah. I am calling from KS. Yeah. I understand. Originally, Basically where are you from? from India. From India. Okay. So what's your yeah. question, Salim? Yeah, my question uh, is that what is the right of a son towards his parents? And uh, what means uh, if he is having only one son, if he comes to abroad, can he leave his parents alone or if his mother is there alone or father is, can he give home pages or like uh, any, like take care, uh, take care places we can leave her or not? Okay. And uh, my second question is, what is the um, uh, duty of a husband toward his wife and wife toward his husband in that, Islamic? That's a lecture, Salim. This is not a question to be answered in a minute or two. There is a program that was recorded five or six years back about um, uh, the husband-wife relationship and the due rights on both of them and uh, duties. So perhaps you can download it and watch it, but it, it's a long subject to cover right now. Thank you, Salim. Okay, we'll take a short break, then inshallah, hopefully we'll resume after that, so stay tuned. Philosophy of Islamic Law, a program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart, and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. Amazing stories. In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily, us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Proactive. Dr. Haitham Al Haddad teaches us how to take a conscious control over our life, set our goals, and work to achieve them in Islam. Take firm steps towards your future, be positive, and be proactive. Every single Muslim needs to have in order to be an effective person. So proactivity uh, in Islam, how to serve our religion and how to serve uh, our life and our guides through all of this. The proactive person is always motivated. The proactive person always have high ambition. The proactive person, he will not lose his time. He will not waste his time. 
the proactive person is a generous person. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, I have another phone call. Abdurrahman from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Abdurrahman? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Great. Alhamdulillah wa shukula. Thank you for asking. Uh, I have a brain tumor surgery two years before. Now my left hand is not working. Mm. I'm working. Now, my problem is when I'm in office, I had very difficult, I mean, I, I'm in doubt how to do, do Salah. Basically, while I do it in it, my clothes become, become dirty and impure, and uh, I can do, do myself. Also, I can do the imam because I can open the buttons of my shirt, but in particular while in the office. Okay. Can you tell me how can, how can I pray? Okay. Uh, do you have any help at the time of purification and answering the call of nature and making wudu? Do you have any help? Pardon me? Could you have any help? Any external help, somebody else to help you during... No, no. No, no I will do myself. I, my right hand is okay. My left hand is not working. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me answer your question innocently, Abdul Rahman. First yes, of yes, all, yes, sorry to hear that. And uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you shifa. He's able to do all things. I say, Allah al-Azim, Rabb al-Ash al-Azim, an yashfiyaka. And I remind you that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a believer who believes in Allah in the last day is hurt by anything, whether it's great or little, even the thorn that penetrates his skin and his patient, that is a reward for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes some of his sins as a result of that. So endure that patiently and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you the best. As far as the prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salli qa'iman, fa'in lam tastata' faqa'idan, fa'in lam tastata' fa'ala jamb. You must stand up in prayer unless if you cannot stand up, then you are permitted to sit down and pray. And if you cannot sit down while praying, even reclining, lying down by any possible mean, the rule in this regard is, you should fear Allah and keep your duty to Him as much as you can afford. Same thing with the concept of purification and tahara. Do your best to purify yourself prior to the prayer according to the maximum effort that you can make without hurting yourself, particularly if you do not have uh, an external help uh, at all times. يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر and he said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. As long as you exert your maximum effort and whatever you can afford, that will be sufficient. Insha'Allah Azza Jal and may Allah accept. Um Aisha uh, from uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and may I request the director and the, 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 the viewers to hold the phone calls because I have a big backlog. I gotta try to answer them Insha'Allah in this episode. Um Aisha, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam Alhamdulillah Sheikh. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I have three questions. Okay. My first question is uh, about, uh, I hear, uh, uh, I read a verse that says that uh, when uh, a person, uh, the angels will come to an uh, oppressed person and ask him, in what condition were you? And he will answer uh, that uh, I was in a disbelieving country or something like this. And there is a hadith which says that you have to do hijra to a... Uh, uh, Muslim country, if it is possible. So we are. How it is uh, possible that to uh, leaving our uh, parents in our country? Mm. Okay, so I got your question. My second question is about the alcoholic uh, that uh, hand the hand uh, rub we use uh, the medical persons, health workers who use. Uh, so is it possible? Or it's okay that we do salah after using the hand rub, which is made of alcohol, and before you for the patients. Okay. You're talking and, uh, about you're talking about cleaning up after the mess or uh, touching the, the private of an individual with bare hands, or you're talking about taking care of the patient, uh, any other body part other than the private. Yes, yes, yes. Normally. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. 
the hand drums which we use uh, uh, which contains alcohol spirit it is called it's for disinfection antiseptic like that so you're asking about using the alcohol for yeah, as an yeah, antiseptic yeah. written it is a uh, ethyl alcohol and it is called spirit maybe it is 93% of ethyl alcohol mm. okay your third question please uh, and uh, okay sir so inshallah i'll call you next time oh, okay great no. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ummu Kulthum from Nigeria had a couple of questions. She asked if somebody loves a girl and is engaged to her and gives her a gift. Is he rewarded for that? Yes, he is rewarded for that. But we have to understand one thing. That engagement or al-khitbah in Islam does not make anything which was unlawful, does not make it lawful. Nor does it make what's lawful unlawful. Which means, my fiancé is not my wife. So we cannot stay together. Simply engagement does not make what was haram, such as al-khalwa, or being in private together, or dating, or going out, or hanging together, or talking on the phone, or chatting. It would not make it simply lawful because we're engaged. No. Only marriage contract would, that make, would, would make that uh, uh, permissible. But taking gifts to my fiancé, in the presence of her guardian or family members is permissible. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in general in the hadith, Tahadu tahabu, that when you exchange gifts that develops love. So that is permissible. And she said, What is the role of intention when it comes to getting reward for good deeds? Are you rewarded for them just by being a Muslim? Any good deed that a believer does, even if it is normal activities that he does with an intention of getting a reward, he will be rewarded for it. In the hadith, which is a sound hadith, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas had consulted the Prophet ﷺ in his sickness uh, when he thought that he would die, uh, concerning a few things, it's a lengthy hadith. The catch in this hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ said, you gotta know that. تَبْتَغِيَ بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ جل إلا كتب لك بها أجرا حتى اللقمة حتى اللقمة تضعها في في امرأتك even if you feed your wife even if you put a bite in your wife's mouth you be rewarded for that if you intend so buying clothes school supplies anything that my house or children need or my wife paying for the medical, paying for anything, for my lawful earning, you will be rewarded for all of that. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once asked, uh, somebody asked him, and said, I have a dinar or a dirham. He said, spend it on your family. Your family are more worthy than those who are far away in their relationship to you. Begin with them. He ended up by saying, even spend it on yourself. So when we spin upon ourselves, on ourselves, reasonably, and from halal and on halal, we are all rewarded for that. And this is the beauty of Islam. Um, Umar from Nigeria asked whether it's required to follow a certain school of thought. No, it is not required. And we did discuss this in details. For you as an ordinary person, or a beginner, seeker of knowledge, you follow the view of your sheikh, or your local imam who is educated and accredited in the sharia. Not any person who grew a beard and wore a shawa qameez or a gubba or a, a turban is a scholar. He has to be accredited. He has to be qualified. And it's got to be known uh, to the people that this is a real sheikh. Or otherwise it's not by the appearance. Uh, Ranma from the United Arab Emirates said, Do you have any tips for praying salah with khushu'a? The best tip I have is a hadith that is narrated by Uthman ibn Affan. And it is collected by Imam Muslim in his uh, sound collection. He said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولْ مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ تَحْضُرُهُ صَلَاةٌ مَكْتُوبَةٌ فَيُحْسِنُ طُهُورَهَا وَخُشُوعَهَا وَرُكُوعَهَا إِلَّا كَانَتْ كَفَّارَةٌ لِمَا قَبْلَهَا مَجْدُنِبَتِ الْكَبَائِرِ if any Muslim attends a fard prayer, so he perfects the tahara which precedes a prayer, does a perfect wudu, a proper 
ablution. Then he perfects his prayer, stands up properly, makes ruku' properly, and sujood properly. He is not picking in his prayer like a rooster picking the seeds, because that is prohibited. He is not speeding up, but he prays with tranquility. Wa khushu'aha, he is very attentive. He tries to be attentive in his prayer. Wa khushu'aha, illa kanat kafara. If you do so with every fard prayer that you pray, this prayer will be a ransom for whatever sins were committed before it, as long as you avoid the major sins. So there is 24-7 means of expiation for one sins, via uh, obtaining khushu' and tranquility in the salah, and praying with uh, khushu' in the salah. The best step to achieve that is, our hearts are like vessels. Whenever the vessel is full of any contents, it does not have a room for any other contents. So if the heart is fully saturated with the love of Allah, with the fear of Allah, with pondering the importance of the prayer, thinking about what Allah prepared for it, uh, reflecting on the verses that is recited or I'm reciting in the prayer, then you automatically obtain khushu'ah. But when you pray and that vessel is full of any other contents, dunya, business, uh, children, uh, anything that busy you during the prayer, you have no chance to earn khushu'ah. You don't even realize that the prayer is over. Some people pray in a jama'ah, and the imam may forget, pray minus or extra. Not a single person would say subhanallah. Why? Because all of them were asleep. All of them were asleep. The imam forgot, and several people praying behind him, nobody realizes that. There is a joke that somebody was praying, and after he recognized that the imam have forgotten one rak'ah, he said subhanallah. So after the prayer, they said, what did he say, subhanallah? He said, because you only prayed three for our asr prayer. He said, no, I prayed four. Everybody else did not object. And nobody objected but him. He said, but I have four stores, and every rak'ah I ordered the account one store, so I only got to audit three, which is the best proof that you only prayed three. So the only one who was awake at that time was awake because of a worldly business. as is sila, is a connection between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we should keep it this way. Insha'Allah, uh, among the few lectures which will be delivering in Dubai about how to uh, earn tranquility of khushu'a and the salah, so hopefully, insha'Allah, we'll be able to air it here. Uh, Brother Javin or Gavin from the United Kingdom, who uh, is not an Arab. And does not speak Arabic, and he's concerned about reading the Quran and benefiting out of the Quran uh, in his own mother tongue, in English. Of course, we would not call it reciting the Quran, rather, we'll be reciting the meaning or the interpretation, the English meaning or any language meaning of uh, the Quran. And of course, you'll be rewarded for that. But I want you to try to spend some time to learn the Arabic alphabet then with the help of any Muslim neighbors or somebody in the community to walk you through. I'm talking about an experience that learning Arabic, just in order to learn how to read the Quran, then of course you can learn its meaning in, all you, in your own mother tongue, is a very simple process. And it is, uh, it's a lot of delight and joy in learning that. And a tremendous amount of reward. Because the Prophet ﷺ gave a when who recites the Qur'an with difficulty, and he is stuttering while pronouncing its letters, he said, Lahu ajran. He received double reward, double the reward of a person who recites it fluently, because you're making that effort. So it is accessible. Well, you don't have time. And uh, alhamdulillah, you can barely read Surah Al-Fatiha and a few verses in the Salah. That will be sufficient for your prayer to be accepted. And uh, of course you will be rewarded for... Uh, reading the meaning of the Qur'an because what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us is to ponder its meaning. So I hope that Allah will help you 
and that will be a beginning of trying to search for a private tutor or any Arabic classes just in order to be able to read the Quran and receive 10 good deeds for reading the Quran in the language it was revealed with. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of this episode. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to benefit from whatever we have learned and pardon us and forgive us our sins. And until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest